Hey everybody! Hey everybody! Hey everybody! Hey everybody! A year in review. Our ups, our downs, and what we're gonna cover on New Year's Day, including this car, the Sugar Mama, all the equipment, all the jobs, everything we got going on. But watch what happened all this year. A couple of little things here. <laughs> right away, I'll. Uh, looks like uh, Garrett's got a couple, or Cletus has got a couple. Uh, bolts that must have stripped out so we'll fix this thing up for him obviously and i'm gonna fix this little deal here this darn valve car bolt uh Der or cletus put on the the uh the vent tubes i think i'll put a little i can't get a uh tool in here because it just hangs over the edge to make it really hard to get that bolt out so i'll go fix that for him too so it makes us easier to get the valve cover off Super clean in the uh, lifter valley so I'm, I'm gonna show you everything as it comes apart here and apparently Cletus has some kind of special tool that's tightening up that bolt because that thing was tight on both sides <laughs> I don't know how he's tightening that up but I'll, I'll clean that up so it's easier to get on and off you can go ahead and take that off you can see there oils nice and clean looks good disregard little uh, water bubbles there that's from methanol perfectly normal didn't have a uh, drive time after the Christmas tree race so all right so this whole thing awkwardly comes off at once like that and then it makes it easier to get the, the cam sink out when these fuel rails aren't here in the way and I think might have to take the fuel rails actually off like this because it's, it's 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag maybe it's 15 pounds of crap but you can take it out like this when the intake manifolds off see how it comes out i can basically do the same thing inside so actually these aren't too big a deal but you will not get this cam sink out of here unless the intake manifolds off and you gotta take it all off as one unit like this so uh just something to note and what we're gonna do now is i will uh we're gonna get this all cleaned up. We'll take the bottom rails and injectors off and we'll get this all sorted out and cleaned and uh, we'll end up putting it all back together so it just is ready to put back on. The bottom rail, so this whole rail, these injectors down on the bottom all are for the street drive. So this is gas, so this pump gas. So what Cleus does is this thing starts up, drives up to the starting line on pump gas pulls into the burnout box on pump gas, starts the burnout on pump gas, and then all of a sudden converts into methanol as soon as it goes past the, I think we have it set at like zero, zero boost, somewhere right around there, converts into methanol, shuts the bottom injectors off, turns the upper injectors on, runs on methanol. And then when you're at the big end of the track, you shut the car off, or actually don't shut it off, at the big end of the track when he lets off the throttle, it starts running on pump gas again, and then drives all the way back to the pits on pump gas. What that really does is uh, you can do it all on methanol. I do it all on methanol in my car. Uh, other cars will do it that way. Um, but what it, one good thing it does is it keeps the oil clean because the oil gets really contaminated by methanol idling, not going down track, idling. So when these things are just cruising up to the starting line, cruising all the way back in particular, um, it does a nice job of keeping the oil clean and less contaminated. Um, it kind of makes a little bit simpler, easier, probably better uh, setup. It's a little hard to do on everything, but uh, possibly a little bit, uh, possibly a little bit nicer. It's getting to be sick week time, so Bailey's here with 2.0. So we're gonna start getting this thing sorted out. Tom's already doing a conversion over on it. We're gonna show you uh, the uh, pump gas tune, just the street stuff, and uh, just some sorting stuff out and just making it run better and trying to make it less hassle less you know there's nothing more irritating than jumping in a car and pulling away from stop sign and things poof, dies so work on tipping working all that stuff and so we'll get that all sorted out and then uh swap it over to uh, uh methanol and which is just a couple valves and putting a dry spud in and then we'll do some low horsepower we are not putting uh 60 70 80 pounds of boost to it uh will it take it yes 
Can it do it? Yes. Are we going to do it? No, because it is really hard on parts and hard on my dyno and it just doesn't actually do a whole lot of good. So Just working on the street tune so this thing tips in drives doesn't do anything stupid greg can do final stuff when he's driving around for eight hours straight keep his mind occupied from wanting to commit harry carry <laughs> from all the noise <laughs> and heat what what do these dragon drive events and just wing it and we never really look under the hood what I said on mine too, it's like the street tune has always ever been figured out the as street. we leave the first day. They, they, and we get it to run and then we pull out of the parking lot yeah, and then yeah. work on it. And then, yeah, I'm just, the just working on it while I'm driving down there. While he's driving, I'm just sitting there dinking around. And the headers could have been melted off of it for all we knew. So we're just, ah, just driving, they don't give a drink. <laughs> So that was just a really super lazy pull and I actually had the dyno set up wrong. It's actually loading more than it's supposed to. That's fine. And uh, then I, um, semi, semi idiot and I uh, forgot to hit the button. <laughs> so I didn't collect any data or data I collected was like a uh, hundred horsepower. But anyways, that doesn't really matter. Uh, we already verified that the injectors, both sets of injectors are working. So I'm just looking at tune up information here. It's got a timing modifier in it somewhere and I, ha and I uh, for the life of me, I can't figure out where it's at, and I can't remember where it's at. Uh, so it's really low on timing, which is also fine. Only 19 degrees of timing right there, so I'm making 12 pounds of boost. First one that was at 12 pounds of boost made uh, that's makes 1300 right there, and here at 25 pounds of boost, 2000 horsepower. There you go, 2000 horsepower at 25 pounds of boost, and uh, 12 pounds of boost it was 1343. So it's all getting pretty in line. So we'll be uh, just continuing to add boost as we're going through here, and. Uh, the tune up's looking good and that's all we're really looking for is making sure the tune up looks fine. It's not picking on individual cylinders or it's not having any issues there. I'm still under time for where it needs to be, so I'm really not worried about horsepower numbers. It's 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 right, it's everything's pretty good, so uh looks fine. So we'll just lean on it more. But uh you know how easy it is to uh to make big horsepower with really good motors and really good turbos. because it sounded really good and just and drove right away from it probably because it made 29.15 so it either made a little more boost or it got really happy right through there so which is possible it might have made a little more boost than i thought it was going to make we'll see yeah. <laughs> well, seem <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, no, definitely. That was that was a, actually a nice pull. I'd have to come back into it and slow the dyno down even more because it, it went right. It sounded really good right there. So it's, it's on right up. Dear Cletus, I'm sending you one of my favorite units for mullet. Please don't kill it. 
It's special to me. Thanks, Steve Morris. All right, son. That time has come again. It's time for you to go back to the battlefront. You're gonna be pushed, pushed to your limit. No, you're gonna be pushed past your limit. But I want you to know, I'm always thinking about you. So, when you go there, you just remember me, and uh, you hang in there, and uh, I'll see you again. All right, I got you in the crate. It's getting time to go. I put some, I put two of the intake manifolds in for Killer B, and uh, tell Killer B that I got a video coming up for him here in the next couple days, so make sure that uh, you tell all the guys down at, at the garage and tell, tell Killer that we did a video for him. It's coming up. So, it's time to go, man. Trying to get this tire on. The, the deal is, is there. This is called a liner tire. So there is a not a inner tube. It's just a tire inside a tire that needs to blow up. And that tire is only like this tall. That's inside here, and that has to uh, that has to be filled up there because that's what actually pushes the tire up against the bead. The inner tire has 50 pounds of pressure in it, and then you set the the tire pressure out here, you know, like five, six pounds of pressure. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's on. <laughs> We're Because this valve stem pumps up the outer tire, the inner tire there pumps up the inner. So that's how we know oh, it. Oh, it'll go off. Yeah. All right, so we're uh, basically teched in. So obviously passed because there really isn't any tech for the car outside of making sure it's uh, safe because it's unlimited. So we're in an unlimited iron class. So we're going to be pulling up here. There is people all over the place. Actually, the whole thing's pretty darn amazing. my oil containment just a little bit. So, it's late in the day. It's kind of windy outside. I really don't care about making a full pass. All I really want to do is, is just make sure everything's still working, everything's good, and we'll make the pass tomorrow.
cap still in it. <laughs> it's a, making a heck of a racket. Drive shaft is, looks like it's still in it. But, uh, so it might be the rear end. It doesn't act like a transmission. It's still in first gear. So, not sure. But probably a third member, I think. Thing. Like I said, I can still see the drive shaft, so. That there is what my best 60 foot to date results in. So. We are, we're not done yet. I have not run out of parts. I'm pretty sure, I've, yeah, right now I haven't run out of parts. I'm pretty sure I've run out of money. <laughs> but uh, uh, the show must go on. off right away so I gotta fix it. some form of pass uh, something something happened right there in the middle I'm not sure what and because uh, I got a new traction control on because my we couldn't put the drive shaft sensor in it because of the new third member so it lost all that and so I got something different going on try to see what happened there and uh, so I think it I think it, I mean it's all right 674 it's really kind of sucks so I gotta see what's going on. Welcome to today's video. I'm your host, Kyle Morris. So we just got done for the day. I've been standing here for about eight hours because I got done at noon. So just wrapping things up over here. Um, they're almost done finally. So we're gonna load the trailer up and head down to the nearest gas station. I just gotta drain the fuel tank and put some pump gas in it and we're ready to roll. Dang it, 7.35. Well, actually, that's probably a little less or a little more than an hour to load up or to do the changeover, which isn't bad. So, uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Pump gas, man. Good old pump gas. 
All right, so we got here to the first checkpoint, and uh, actually, and the the gas station was so close, I just wasn't really paying attention. And uh, as we got out on the road, I noticed that I do not have second gear, and there is no second gear. And then all the dots connected, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's why. Uh, after I broke the third member last night, uh, broke the pinion on that gear. Uh, right when it went into second gear, it rolled the sprag of uh, the transmission. So when I made the pass this morning and knocked the tire off right away, didn't know anything because whatever, didn't you know? I aborted the pass. Never thought about it. And then went out to make the that 674 pass, and uh, like I said earlier, I knew that something something was weird. Something had happened. I was trying to figure it out and look at it because it's like the thing over wrecked. It's never never gone up 9,000 RPM. Well, it went up to 9,000 9, RPMs because it uh, rolled the sprag in second gear, which just makes it stay in first gear. It never goes into second gear. And then when it hit third gear, then the car took back off. And that's why it was slower in a turd. So, uh, I'm not, I'm gonna race it in, uh, I'm gonna set up my shifter so uh, I'm just going to race first and third gear. Ain't done yet. Only nine miles to the hotel. This is uh, checkpoint two. Woody's River Rue Hub and Grill. Long since closed. <laughs> Actually, they're just closed because it is 1.46 a.m. We're, we're ready for a solid four hours of sleep, people. Let me tell you, before we got to start this whole show all over again. But it is what it is. Uh, Lord willing, we won't be uh, leaving so late and they won't have other, um, well, I don't know, I forgot what I was going to say. Getting too tired to talk. So, uh, see you in the morning. <laughs> Okay, so we just got here to the track. It's early morning, must be eight o'clock. Shoot. So we're just trying to get everything all set up, get rocking so we can go out there and make our pass. This time we're gonna try going fast in the morning, hopefully not kill the tire and uh, we should be good. Oh yeah, so this is quarantine area. So the top three of each class, if you're 750 and faster, goes in here and uh, nobody's really allowed to touch the car except somebody else is already in the yeah. impound area and uh, so what I'm doing right now is changing spark plugs uh, just going back to my race lash race spark plug uh, just uh, change oil just for kicks and giggles and put my drive spud in for my fuel pump and the rock and roll. Morning, boys. Morning. Did you sleep? No. <laughs> like a three and a half hours after I took a good shower. But we're here. But I'd like to, I know that it'll take more. I think tomorrow we're gonna be 125, 60 foot's pretty easy if the track is in any kind of decent shape. Uh, 347, 230, 524, and an 8, 138 miles an hour, LB, 805, 173. I'll take that. Alright, so we're going up for a pass. Uh, remember, transmission's broke, so it does not have second gear, so we're just gonna skip right past it.
pass on without second gear, so it just goes right from first to third. And so I gotta take a look at it and uh, see if I can soften it up, see if I can make it better yet. And uh, it's got a big, it's got an oil leak. There's something blue oil inside the in the engine or in the driver's compartment. So I figure out what's going on with that. You see, one chute didn't open up. Uh, one chute didn't open up. It's popping like a mother trucker out there. Cause I was on the brakes hard. <laughs> the 60 foot was was fine. One ten. 292 is actually decent, but right through here it's it's really soft because it's down a it's down a gear. Okay, everybody. Uh, we were just hauling butt. We made it past the parts or National Parts Depot. Wish I could have went in there and seen all about it. Uh, did not because I needed to get over here because I got a transmission from Kevin. It's as far as up on the on his lift right now. So we're at transmission number yeah. three. Well, we we swapped one today too. So and he just it's just he, transmission day apparently. It was transmission day, yeah. So he just swapped the transmission. In fact, he was literally literally started the car as we pulled in, and then he pulled out. We put the car right up on the lift, and we're putting the other this other transmission in there. So. We have finally run into uh, parts that I cannot replace or fix. But let me show you. So we had the transmission lined up. And once again, I just happened to look. Well, I didn't happen to look. I looked into the pan and I saw, holy crap, there's a couple more uh, bearings there. Passenger there, Makeley, by Makeley said, Boy, he goes, that thing left so hard, and it did. It left with a 110. He says it was just carrying the front tire out. <laughs> says it left hard. And apparently so. So let's take a look at this grandiose thing. Well, you can see there, it has broken the U-joint again. It has a brand new U-joint cap. Uh, the bigger problem is, is that if you look here, it has destroyed the yoke on my carbon fiber drive shaft. I don't have another carbon fiber drive shaft. If I did, I, it's obvious you're totally exceeding the capability of, of this design, this 1350, and yeah, it has a 1350. But we just, like everything, you keep on leaning on stuff harder, you keep on pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, and it just exceeded. And uh, there is, it is impossible to get a drive shaft for this thing and make tomorrow. So we are, we are out. You will not what? I will not lift. I will, you will not? I will not pull the chute early. Will not pull the chute early. I will not <laughs> out. <laughs> I will not wussy out. <laughs> Just made our one and done pass for today. It wasn't a seven, but it definitely had a mile an hour for a seven. 134, 60 foot. I was just just spinning through there. I felt that spin and get a little bit out of control. Uh, 533 the eighth, a little slow. 137, 815, 179.9, 180 miles an hour basically. So it definitely had the mile an hour to be well 
in the sevens, but it just had that messed up 60 foot. I made it a little bit hotter than what maybe I should have for what the track prep is, but we're gonna load everything up and hit the road. That's, that's 43 mile an hour in the back half. 43 mile an hour in the back half, yeah. That's pretty good. beautiful and then it just started powering into it and it's like well all right we here are at ksr obviously uh kyle you saw kyle made a nice pass big mile an hour Clarky made super cool pass uh cletus broke finally mullet engine gave it up and uh so we're now back here at ksr <clears throat> made the drive all right so we're here day 400 of sick week it seems like truly it was okay i I've, I've been you know I'm just keeping it conservative. I don't. I want to make it through the week first. We can turn up the week tomorrow when I, you know, as long as I can break the beams is all that matters tomorrow. So, final day. It's a long journey with many trials and tribulations, but we did in fact make it. Real nice weather today so far. Hopefully the the rain stays away. It is a little humid, but it feels pretty nice out. Maybe we'll be running a little bit fast today. Hopefully. Uh, feels good to have made it this far. I've overcome my expectations. So. We're looking good. It looked, it looked, everything looked good. I saw that it, uh, it started hiking up the tire, it set it down, and it started hiking up again. And it's been having problems with it. Uh, with the boost controller PID. And I think it's just, I think it's wrong. So it's been oscillating. And the one time where it went like 180, the thing hit on, it was uh, going through on a big peak oscillation. And I bet you it went through on a minor. He's got a safe pass, he's finished, he's done. Uh, now you might as well turn it up. All right, so I think we found what our issue was. The radiator cap was loose because we were trying not to pressurize the coolant system when we were driving, trying to keep the a little radiator issue slash fix happy. We're not pressurizing it so it's not trying to push out. So have, leaving that open going down the track, it's spewing a bunch of water out of it. All the water's getting sucked into the turbo because the cap is right close to the turbo there. So the engine's all mad because uh, it's sucking in water. So if we tighten that sucker down, turn up the boost, we're gonna go try again. Sounds different. It sounds like something's wrong. It sounds fine to me, but That's I don't. I don't listen to this car all the time. All right, officially give it a hang up. Yep. Almost. So that. close. There are no rods hanging out of it. It's not like broke, broke. So. Bro. I guarantee you there's something wrong with it, though. There's something wrong with it for sure. On the same. Path. See, this is where when you have a scramble button, A.K.A. the piston delete button. But it fixed my piston delete issue. And so when it like lays over and you go, what the heck is going on? <laughs> Hit the button, make it go faster. <laughs> it's a good thing he doesn't have one of those, a piston delete button, because it would probably delete something in that motor. So always remember, this thing is a real deal small block Ford based on the 302 block. A real deal small block Ford. Every, everybody comes by and goes, oh, I thought it had an LS in it. Oh, I thought it had an LS in it. Oh, that's weird. I thought it had an LS in it. Wow, that runs really good. It doesn't have an LS in it. So, anyways, you can talk Kyle, it's his car. <laughs> Paid 600 bucks for that car. Put a battery in it and a fuel pump in it. 
and we're gonna drive it to Michigan. That thing's been sitting for a million years. And uh, so it's, I, I love it, I think it's great. My wife thinks it's stupid. <laughs> so we have made it, uh, we're, we're not quite there, we're almost to Atlanta. The white pearl here is running like a freaking top. It is, we're tripping the mileage on it because it's crazy. This thing is getting, this has got 220, 221,000 miles on it. Buy it for 600 bucks again. Got some bad tires that are vibrating, but Mitch is driving, so hey. <laughs> we'll take care of it later. And this thing is getting 20 miles to the gallon. So this is the, the second stop. We're just tripping it now just to try to make sure that it actually is getting 20 miles to the gallon. 20 miles to the gallon. That is freaking crazy. And that's 70 miles, 80, 80 miles like, an hour. That's 80, yeah. That's 80 miles 80, an hour. 80 miles an hour trying to catch up. So, that is crazy. This thing is cool. Now, let me explain why I'm uh, gonna cut this drive shaft part. So, as PSC, PST told me that for what we've already been doing with this, how much time it already has on it, what it have been doing and abusing it. It really is probably just for a matter of safety and maintenance to get ready to, or, you know, change the drive shaft anyways. Just get rid of it. And since it has been obviously vibrated to death because of that deal, where is that? Oh, sorry, wrong side. Hit. <laughs> vibrated to death and hit and broken pinion and all the stuff that happened with this thing. It's just not safe to cut the end of it off and make it shorter. It's, it's just not safe, okay? So that's the only reason I'm doing it, cutting this thing up. So, and I kind of want to see what's in it too. And uh, as a, a matter, another thing that's really kind of interesting is, so this thing breaks two U-joints, uh, third member, does all this other stuff, mangles up the, uh, oh, this mangles up the yoke twists it all up and these things are just glued in here how in the how in the world as, as my buddy tom hammonds over there says no oh, that's space shuttle crap right there man that thing is like really cool <laughs> it must be because whatever they use to bond this together it breaks steel u-joints before it breaks the glue loose that is sick so anyways ready <laughs> All right, let's see. What this saying is, oh, 43, it's not 53, 43, yeah. That makes more sense. Go so, uh, away. Right about there, I'd say. Do, do, do. That's pretty, pretty neat. I mean, it is, it is just a, it's just a flat out, uh, it's just a carbon fiber tube. Nothing special inside it. So, anyways, I think that's gonna be some pretty cool wall art for people. Shoot, maybe you could, uh, maybe you could cut it square right here and you could make like a, a center post table out of it or something, coffee table. Huh? Or a lamp? Oh yeah, like a lamp. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, buddy. I think it's time. You've done a really good job for me. I appreciate it. So, it's time to start taking you out.
well, you saw us just pull my engine out of my car. You didn't see me just go through it and make sure everything is okay. Everything's all good. Let me show you what's going on with it now. It is now Cletus McFarland's. Now, you may ask, how come he didn't get a brand new one? Well, the deal is, is I can't get a brand new one done fast enough. I can't get one done fast enough. So, the only way I could get Cletus a SMX was to sell him my used, my personal SMX. Now, this engine right here is a bad mother trucker. I promise you it is. Uh, it is very fast. <clears throat> and it is very good. But it is used. Take a look at any of these videos. It is This is what we call the scratch and dent sale also. I have damaged this engine. This is not brand new. Go look at the videos over here. You'll see the mass exodus rods. Does not have those rods in it again, obviously. Don't even ask that kind of question. <clears throat> obviously, and this has been running. We ran for uh, until we ran out of chassis parts in the wagon this year at Sick Week. Uh, engine was perfect, but uh, ran out of chassis parts. Just couldn't keep on going. And uh, so now, we put this uh, back together. This has a, you know, a damaged block, damaged or remachined block. There, there's a little bit of damage here and there, but it's like... Uh, it's like a, I, I, I would call this like a, a, a Bugatti Veyron engine that somebody smashed the front fender. It's still a Bugatti Veyron. It just has a smashed fender, right? This is still an SMX. It just has some damage along the block, cosmetic stuff, nothing of any consequence, but it is not brand spanking new. So that is how we, but it's something that I can't sell to uh, the average Joe either. So it's a, it is a used motor, it has a little bit of damage here and there, um, but it is all cosmetic and this thing is going to be bad. So. What's up guys, my name is Kyle Morris. I'm here with my dad, Steve Morris, and I'm getting ready to do an interview with him on the origin story of SME. Let's start at the very, very, very beginning before racing. All right, so one of the questions that, that people have or comments that people bring up is, oh, you must have had uh, people in the racing family. No, I did not. Uh, all of my family was all into music and other stuff. Um, uh, you see here that uh, my Grandpa and Grandma were uh, dairy farmers. I spent a lot of time there. Uh, my mom and dad got divorced when I was nine years old. So one of the, one of the things we were was we didn't. I didn't have any uh, motorsport stuff. Didn't have anything around me with any motorsport stuff. Um, and we were poor. And I mean poor. Me were poor. Uh, didn't have a TV. Um, I finally uh, went to a little garage sale and bought my own TV, a little black and white TV and uh, made little rabbit ears and you got three stations back in those days you had abc nbc and cbs and uh, i remember my one deal was i always always remember to this day in uh school is all i wanted to do in life was watch the fall guy and uh it was on abc 
and my little black and white TV that I picked up at a garage sale did not get ABC. So all my friends would, we'd go to school in you know, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and uh, all my friends would tell me all about the fall guy and had this cool 78 Chevy truck was all jacked up with big tires and it was jumping, doing all sorts of cool stuff. And I would always miss out. Correction, we were not poor. We, were, we didn't have any money. Poor is a little more of a mental attitude and probably a spiritual thing. But uh, I went to school with clothes that my grandma made. Imagine me sending you to school in a handmade, hands, hands handmade flannel shirt. When flannel shirts were not cool, so it's the middle of summer, and I would be, uh, I would go to school like third, fourth, fifth grade, in uh, a long sleeve flannel shirt that my grandma made. <laughs> and that's like designer now, so that's designer now, but it wasn't cool back then. <laughs> Kids would pick on me mercilessly, but uh, you know, uh, I didn't ever have anybody except probably my uncle Marty, who always had cool motorized stuff, and that's probably where I picked up everything was from my uncle Marty, and. Uh, um, there's a really good video. We'll show you a little clip here where I did, uh, where we did uh, a overhauling on my uncle Marty's uh, '78 Ford truck. It really turned out nice to, to to help him out and to show my appreciation for all the things he did for me when I was a kid. Kyle has been working on this billet block Lamborghini 5.2 liter for Dallas Performance on the engine dyno. This entire thing is backwards. So, so the drive is going out that way. And in the car, the drive actually goes. Is that right? Yes, the opposite way. The opposite so way. These, yes, that's right. It goes the opposite all way. All these flanges, the intake, the exhaust is symmetrical. So what we've been able to do to hook it up to our dyno is actually just put everything on backwards. And it actually works that way. It works fine. Yeah. So it, it, this is actually backwards. All right. Let's go out there and make some pulls. Okay, so you guys just watched that pull. We are at 1856 at 8100, 1213 at 7900. This thing does not make any boost on these twin 98 millimeter turbos until it gets to about mm, between 6,000 and 6,500 RPM, and then it really starts to make the steam. So that's why you're kind of uh, hearing me do these real long pulls. That, and we want to simulate as close to possible um, what the load is going to be like when it's in the car, because what these guys really specialized in is roll racing. So that's like real and half mile stuff, which is all real long duration, heavy load stuff. All right, so we are map three. Not the biggest map, but still pretty big. Uh, really nice linear graph out here. 2156 at 8500, 1335 at 8500. Looking really clean. So I'm pretty happy with that. Wayne's pretty happy with that. We're gonna get a hold of Dallas, see what they think. And um, I think we'll probably call it a day on that. I made it here to Texas 2K. My flight got canceled last night, so I just literally showed up and not had time to do anything. Other than uh, look at the basic install, and uh, we're just gonna have to make a hit on it. But I really don't think there's anything wrong. Nobody seems to think there's anything wrong. Pete doesn't think there's anything wrong. But you know, you're just trying to be careful. All right, first soft hit. Burn bullet. Just trying to get A to B. Just about guarantee you there was no CO2 or no air pressure to the gates on 
Uh, clean this. That's probably just on 870s on a uh, 7 PSI. Now over to something else different. This is our. Uh, this has one of our Viper, or I'm saying Viper. This has one of our Lamborghini V10s in it for Dallas Performance. So this is Dallas's car. And uh, I forget which, uh, this one is not one of the billet block cars. This one is, uh, this one is a stock block. How much horsepower does this one make? This is Wayne, you know Wayne, 2000. So this makes 2000 at the, at the wheel. And uh, so it's a pretty good piece. So we'll go up there and watch this thing make a pass too. So we got, again, so we got uh, Cletus with the SMX, <laughs> Ned Dumpy with the uh, Viper V10, and Dallas Performance with uh, Lamborghini V10 stuff. Alrighty, uh, first session of qualifying. Now they drive around the water and then back in. So. What Wayne's telling me is they have a diff in the car that uh, is disengageable. It's like a little separate front wheel drive clutch setup. And so they don't want to get any uh, water on the front tire at all because it still has a percentage of power and the percentage of power changes going down track. <laughs> gets really out there and wandering all over. Alright, second qualifier. Should be with some form of boost. I imagine it's the same pass that we were playing in earlier today. Like I said, uh, Pete's doing the tune-up, which is awesome. That's cool. And uh, I'm just engine support. have gotten is just came in have not unboxed it have not even looked at it yet all billet 12 inch two-year guarantee in a pro modified car and this car so let's unbox this thing man that is a big mother trucker <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. What the? <laughs> wow, that is. That looks so much larger than what I thought. Boy, that thing looks like it came out of some kind of fighter jet or something. I'll tell you what. Rated at 10,000 horsepower at least. Wow. Crazy. It's a 12 inch ring and pinion, and that's why they actually guarantee it. And it's a uh, 370 gear set. Has the uh, reluctor wheel on it for the drive shaft sensor. Obviously, 1480 U joints and uh, drive shaft for this. And then it, they have a special uh, slip yoke. You know what yoke that is? Where uh, we don't have to pull the yoke out of the transmission. It just it's like this kind of yoke. Right. So some kind of yoke where it's going to make it easier to get the transmission in and out of the car. Ready? Yeah. Oh, it's light too for how big it is. There. I didn't think it was. <laughs> I didn't think Bert was gonna be able to get it done this quick. Bert's a bad dude. He he gets to make. He just makes things happen. So, anyways, the rear end's already in the car. All billet. 
fully water jacketed, drag and drive, 3,000 plus horsepower. If you want to learn more about this, all you got to do is just go to our website and you can see the extra head studs. Not extra peeny, teeny weeny, little stupid head studs, but actual altered head stud pattern, all uh, half inch head studs. Not little one here, little one here, and half inches over here. No, it's an altered, changed head stud pattern to clamp cylinder heads on to avoid the head gasket issues. So we'll be dyno and be testing this at a bigger horsepower levels, trying to make it in that 3,500 horsepower range. All right, we got Dewey in here inspecting stuff. This is uh, three of uh, the next three SML billet blocks. You want to check that out real close. Uh, fully full billet, obviously. Water jacketed. This is water water in, water out. Still takes some LS componentry. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah, back up, back up, back up, back up, back the dog up, and. Uh, uh, water jacket all through here now notice that altered head bolt pattern I talk about this all the time, but it is important There's actually a head stud that goes right here Through the intake port and we'll show you that on the cylinder heads here half inch head stud here half inch head stud here Revised move these in so it's a more symmetrical pattern all the way around ultimate cylinder head clamping for LS It's point blank is the best LS based LS style uh, you can drop this engine in. You cannot use my block with any other LS head. It has a different head bolt pattern. You can't. You can't use my heads with any other block. But you can drop this in, replace your LS7, LSX, whatever you got, and your hot side, cold side, everything's going to line up. That's pretty nice. And here you have it. Pwn this mother trucker. When you see this thing work, I showed you a uh, demo video of this thing uh, when I was at the PRI show. And now I'm seeing it. And I swear this is taller up in here. But all computer operated. I I'll show you this thing. This thing is Billy Bad Boy. They're going to come. So the guys at Rattler are going to come train us here and not next week i think the week after or maybe it is next week not quite sure um <laughs> this thing is pretty pretty sweet for doing extremely accurate extremely good and faster honing diamond honing all right this <laughs> they put Gulf Coast uh, drive shaft. We'll th open this up, and this is what they, they wrote on it. Which is cool. Problem is, we're on the other side of the state from Detroit. <laughs> Let's open this up and show you all this deal. Because I was pretty fascinated in how they actually make this drive shaft. And this is. A Billy bad boy drive shaft right here folks you see the comparison picture here of the old drive shaft to this drive shaft and uh, this is big bigger than normal so super happy about that 1480 U joint which is way larger than 1350 this the rear end <laughs> transmissions they're as much as you're gonna get so Lord willing we're gonna make that thing uh we're gonna get this thing knocked out of the park and we're gonna we're gonna do really good I like this uh, much thanks to the Gulf Coast guys down there we are working on the wagon and we're in a mad thrash because we're going to route 66 Chicago the NHRA Pro National on uh, May 19th 20th 21st something like that yeah but I'll show you my new chimney 
out of the car. So come here, you gotta check this out. So if you see right up there, right in the center of the hood, the car is up in the air, up in the air quite high, so it's a little hard to even point up over there. Um, that is my engine vent tank. So I've always had we didn't build the we didn't build the chassis in order to have see current chassis stuff. When you see all the Pro Mod cars, the Turbo Pro Mod cars, Supercharged Pro Mod cars, they'll have a uh, right in the rear deck lid. They usually have this little chimney's go and it's evacuating all the stuff out of the engine. Well, they typically what they do is the chassis guys will build the frame tube that goes all the way and has openings all the way up to the back here, and then. They can use the actual frame for a vent tube. Well, we didn't build the car this way. Didn't have Skinny Kid build it that way, so the ends are capped, so I can't just connect to a frame tube because it doesn't go anywhere. So I had to run on the line and do all this sort of stuff, and, but I've always had it up in the front of the car, and it's a hassle sometimes to have it in the front of the car. And so I wanted to get it all the way in the back of the car, so if it ever had a problem, didn't oil or didn't spew anything on in front of the tires, and so we put it back here, and I thought it will be really cool to have this little chimney stack. So here's the tank. This is the tank. This dash 16 line goes all the way up to the front of the car, up to the engine. And uh, there's a battery cover, carbon fiber battery cover that goes right here. And this is now the vent tank. And when we're up on the starting line, and we put it up on the two-step, that little chimney stack right there is going to go... And just breathe. It's a breather. It makes it. It allows all the engine breathing will happen right there. So let's get to putting this engine in the car. We're gonna have this thing running tonight, Lord willing, and uh, get ready to rock and roll. So you just heard it run, and uh, so it just that was the initial startup. Uh, it started up on gasoline, then it swapped it over and started up on methanol. Me, so it's still running on methanol right now. So we'll get this thing all sorted out. We had to verify timing because we changed our reference angle because I sent all that stuff to Cletus. So <clears throat> everything's just slightly different. So we did that, and now we're uh, going through. I uh, got it to start, got it to getting it to idle. So I'll just resort out a little bit of the tune stuff right there. So I'll do that later. But, all right, we're running. All right, so we're all loaded, or well, we're finishing loading up. It's uh, 10 o'clock or something. And I think everything's okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure the engine's okay. It's got a weird sound driving in gear. <laughs> We're not sure what that is. Um, but we'll figure it out, you know, when we get there to the track. So this is my transmission number three, long story. Now normally right here, you might see what we call a transmission. It takes power from here and puts it back there. Currently missing, going on number three. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with transmissions, don't freak out. There's 
I just, there's just something weird going on and uh, we're just gonna figure it out but uh, no worries it's the right way to go it's the right transmissions everything's correct here there's just there's just something I'm missing or somebody's messing with me or I don't know what's going on we'll see like I'm steering it oh is that the captain's wheel <laughs> Yeah. So, Clark. So, Steve. You want to sponsor so me with Mountain Dew? <laughs> one Mountain Dew? Yeah. I will give. You, I will sponsor you one Mountain Dew. Thank you. Yay! Oh. All right, Clark's flying. Right on the jump. Good thing they just dropped the ratchet. I know. Again. Stop. Stop. All right, well, we're in line and we're uh, waiting to race Bob with his Fox Body Mustang. And, uh, you know, uh, I have no idea. So uh, it'll be the first full pass on the car. and. Actually, I didn't even make a full pass on the car in sick week because I always had either broken transmission, broken something. So every pass was some kind of aborted pass. So uh, different setup, different transmission and converter than I've used before. So a bunch of different stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. See, everybody's just laughing at me. I'm good natured about everything. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so you saw the burnout. Burnout was fine, and uh, good. I do not think the transmission is broke. Uh, but unfortunately, something is broke, and so it started coming up on the on the uh, two step. And as soon as it hit the two step. It just it lost the cylinder. Something happened, so something's broken. It um, there's no holes anywhere, so that's always good. Did I say the burnout looked good? Yeah, the burnout looked good. No, that's about all. So uh, it was a mad thrash trying to get everything all done. Mad thrash trying to figure out the torque converter problem, material, and changing transmissions and converters and doing all that stuff. So. Uh, it's been a heck of a two days, but that's just the way it is, the way it goes sometimes. So let me show you exactly, well, I don't know exactly what happened. I came out this morning, I couldn't hardly sleep last night because it's ticking me off so bad. And so I come out this morning, I put the car up on Projax, and I take the my containment tray off of the engine, and it did its job because when I saw two rod bolts, this was what was sitting in my containment tray. So it did not uh, kick the rod out of the block, so I'm happy about that. It didn't break the block, but obviously it's broken. Now, this is the bearing that was out of there. You can see this is the journal side. This is the back of the bearing that would be uh, uh, on the connecting rod side. That's nice. I mean, it had 135 pounds of oil pressure just like normal, perfect. 
right after the burnout there, all of a sudden it, on the dad log, it dropped 15 pounds, like, and that's fine, and it went, boom. Dropped down 15 pounds, which means it probably broke right there. I didn't feel it, which is really funny. <clears throat> and then when I staged the car, uh, it came up on boost fairly quick and jumped up there, and it was at like 115 pounds, and all of a sudden it jumped down again. And that's when I felt it and it started running bad and it, uh, this is the number one rod according to EGTs and number two uh, rod looks like it happened right as I was staging the car. We'll knock this piston and rod out real quick here and then I will show you and explain to you exactly what's happened and then I gotta go back to work so originally we thought that the connecting rod had given up the ghost because I couldn't explain why it had broken the connecting rod so I, we started talking about it uh, it's not broken this this connecting rod which is actually really good I'm happy about that uh, has obviously destroyed and broken up this other connecting rod. What has happened, let me grab my piece. This used to go right there. This broke off. Yes, this is extremely rare. No, this has never happened to me before. I have broken, I have had head studs break. And we have had, there was a little rash of uh, LS main studs because ARP was so backed up during this whole COVID bull crap that there was a bunch of Chinese studs that came across. No, these are not Chinese. There was a whole bunch of Chinese main studs that came through and they would do this exact thing where they it was a bad material, bad batch of material. Well, it was just bad material because it came out of China. Uh, this, I've already talked to the stud company. This is brand new to this is the first block, the first set of these main studs that we've ever used. This is the first block out of Bailey's machine. This is the first uh, block with these main studs. I've already contacted and talked to the uh, stud provider and immediately said there is a problem because these all torqued up fine, torqued up perfectly okay. Never even gave it a second thought, but that is a material failure. But when this broke, very interesting that it didn't destroy stuff back here it actually moved forward so that's telling me that it probably did the burnout and when I hit the brake <laughs> you stop after the burnout it goes pink whoosh boom 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 and literally there is one spot in here in particular where it just fits right there in the pocket well where is that aiming at it's aiming directly at that connecting rod and the bolt not a connecting rod problem thank you thank you Jesus <laughs> because that was could have been a bad deal because I have so many of these rods I have so many of these end stuff and I have so many you know uh, things uh, going on that I would have had to uh, it would have cost me dearly to replace people's connecting rods and to be preventative maintenance. All right, so we're we're already uh, putting air in the tire, getting ready to go up. So I did a shock adjustment, pretty well set to go make a, a, a relatively safe pass. So not swinging through the fences, looking for a double. That's about it. So that's a nice, easy, safe pass. I'm about two tenths off in my in my uh, eighth mile, so I'm pretty happy with that. It went straight. I did everything I was supposed to. I drove it back. The drive shaft ain't broke. The transmission's not broke. The rear end's not broke. The engine doesn't seem to be broke. So I think we're really good. So we're gonna pack up and get out of here. Um, but it was a nice pass. So I'm feeling really good about that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, All right, so you saw we made that last pass, and it left good. It had you know a decent 60 foot, a 128 60 foot. I've only ever been 127 with this car, and it really left super soft. So excited about that, but it got out to like the 330, and when it ramped the boost in real hard, got a little bit squirrely, and then it hit the safety. So what had happened was I moved my dome pressure sensor from the firewall, where it's not supposed to be. I know it's not supposed to be there, directly onto the wastegate, and I basically had twice as much dome pressure in it as what I needed, so it automatically just tried to throw all the boost at it. Looks like Kyle has found a problem. So the first pass today left like a banshee, probably be, and because it overboosted. And it, when it overboosted, it hit the boost safety and shut off. Right? Yeah. Overboosted by a lot. He's got safety set up pretty high. <laughs> so made what? How many pounds of boost? And yeah, I made 48 pounds. 48 pounds of boost. And a little old 347. So, came back, fixed the boost controller, uh, changed that, went out, and I thought it left really good, but it was slower, and it nipped a plug, and... Two plugs. Two plugs. Three plugs, actually. Three. And uh, so, it was way happy. He hasn't even looked at the data log yet, but I'm telling you, it's probably was making more boost than what he wanted to, again. And now, if you crank this over, crank it over, Kyle. You can see on this number six cylinder that it is spraying water. Right there. Yeah, there you go. Right on the lens. So it sprayed water right on the lens. The, uh, but the thing is, is it's not a head gasket. Or we don't think it's a head gasket. Most likely not a head gasket because it's got compression. Normally, if you knock a head gasket out of these things, they don't have any compression. This thing still has compression. We think it's probably cracked a block, the overboost probably cracked a block, heard it. So looks like Kyle's out. Alright, we're taking off down the road. My alternator belt squealing. It'll stop. There it goes. It's not. Alright, we're heading over to the Byron. Well, we made it to the uh, first hotel, and, and it was only like the last five minutes it was rough <laughs> because directionally challenged and not under. And so I'm directly directionally challenged. So I'm I'm counting on trying to follow somebody, <laughs> and they pull a, a 90 degree U-turn, which is impossible in this car, and then they disappear. And I don't even have a map in my hand. Don't have nothing. So anyways, but we finally made it. So that's all cool. Parked here, ready to uh, uh, go get something to eat. And then we're gonna come back cause I gotta work on the car cause I have a problem with my input output expander. So there's some little issue going on there and I gotta figure that out.
probably hurt everything. Oh well. So the terrible pass screwed up right from the get go. Sometimes you just get out of the groove and you get just get bad. So I didn't even the burnout sucked. Uh, then I didn't stage right and double balled on accident because I didn't know where the. I just screwed up all all over the place. And then when I so when I did that, then I'm in there trying to build boost, and light comes down. I'm not on boost. Let go of the button anyway. Super late and drive. Uh, then all of a sudden thing leaves like a freaking herd of turtles, and then all of a sudden it catches up and boost comes on. Then it's driving all over the track, and then I get down to the big end of the track and pulled the parachutes probably too late should have pulled them a lot earlier so i couldn't make the turn off i'm riding the brakes hard so i don't go in the sand and the brakes uh, overheated and totally went away and I, I had no brakes it was just coasting at the very end so that's why i was all the way down at the end uh missed the turn out i had to throw the shoes in the car back up uh brakes are back they had just gotten too hot well i think they're gonna call it it's raining it's been raining it's supposed to have more rain come in, so I'm going to be really surprised uh, if they don't call it. I know there's kind of some people petitioning to, to call it because you just sit around, wait, and don't do anything, and then more rain comes in, and so it's going to be bad. Going up for pass number one. We got everything sorted out. CO2 is working. The base gates, actually, it sounds pretty quick, crisp and clean, so we'll see. I think we're good. All right, so you, you saw me make that run. So we got the, I, uh, we had a CAN bus problem this morning and we re broken wire and we re rewired that. The CAN bus controls a whole bunch of stuff in the car, in the ECU. So the, uh, it's just electronics jargon. I don't even know what a CAN bus is really, to tell you truth. We made that pass and the boost controller didn't work. So it was just on wastegate. So I didn't even bother to make, to run it out. It probably would have went a, it probably would have went on seven pounds of boost. Probably would have went a 790. Stupid. It should have just went. Whatever. But anyways, I thought, oh, sweet. I'll just come back around and I'll fix the problem. So I drove the car all the way back and I parked it right freaking there. And then we pushed it back in spot so it could just fix the boost controller. I figure out what's wrong with the boost controller. Go to start it. Won't start. We spent two and a half hours trying everything under God's green earth to get this car to start. To figure out what is going on and if there's something has happened. Okay, so we have a miraculous last second ditch effort and we're going to drive up there into the stage lanes and work on it. So we're going to try continuing to fix it. Uh, Joe figured out what's wrong with it. I still don't know. <laughs> so, uh, now they're working on the boost control and we'll go make a hit. All right, on this episode of Steve Morris Engines, I learned something. I learned something from Joe O, because Joe is smarter than me in a lot of areas. I struggled with this car for three freaking hours trying to figure out what was going on, and I knew that something, I said, it's, not, it is, it's 180 off. I can't figure out what is going on. I checked the crank. I checked the cam sink. It's in the same spot. I can't figure out what is going on. It is in the same spot. I can't figure out what's going on. Joe has saved my bacon. 
big time. I lit- I had on my shorts and said, screw it. I cannot figure this out. Time's run out. It's done. Then I said, the brainstorm, I called Joe. Oh, hey, how far away are you? 25 minutes. We got time. <laughs> Come on over. Joe figures it out. It's a uh, cam sync moves issue something it picks up the wrong side of it whatever i don't know all right it's uh 11 p.m and the old girl's still cutting it and now i'm pretty we're pretty devoted to it so we're gonna we're tractoring on and oddly enough even though it has this weird speed where it has all this piston smoke off of one side. But it probably has, it, it hasn't smoked for the last what 60 70 thousand miles, something like that. I don't know I don't know how many miles it is. It feels like a whole lot. That's the thing about these drag and drive events is for the uh 1% of pure joy that you get out of it. It still it still seems to to compensate for 99% misery. So you saw us make the pass, you saw us smoking. So it's still got a pinched ring, something like that. So, and then I looked at the track and I went, ooh, kind of icy. It was really narrow, without the groove. And so it, it drove out there, left pretty slow. I just drove it down the track. It, it shook the tire and spun, and I just lifted and just, just drove down the track. Went to 867, 138. But I don't think there's a whole lot left in it. And at this point, we're not gonna win. I can't, I really probably aren't gonna, be able to go sixes in it again without probably hurting the piston or hurting the ring further right now it's not hurt hurt so i'm able to drive it i can take it down to the cordova we can finish the whole event and uh, i think that's what we're going to do so we're Alrighty, so we came here last night after work, made a pass. Right off the trailer, right what it should be. 438, 170 mile an hour, uh, really nice, super clean pass, easy, only 35 PSI at boost only 35 psi so it's crazy um that's really good
I cut a 078 light, cut a 079 light. And he, but that little car, my, some, I think I had it too soft because I only went. Because I only went 114, he went 109, 294, and I'm way down here at 3, 302, so that's way soft. And only went at 448, so yesterday I went at 438 right off the trailer. I softened it up a little bit, and I quite apparently softened it up too much. bugger got out on me I didn't I didn't cut a terrible light with 101 which sucks he went 640 or uh, 064 and he's still out 60 foot of me so my 60 foot was a little bit better went 112 I went 299 both are pretty slow but I think the track is just a little bit greasy and uh, I only went a 440 or a 443 which is terrible 167 so I'm off right there. The margin of victory was 0 .010. <laughs> so, anyways, I just caught him at the end. I mean, at the end. So. All right, so what you saw there was a line that vibrated loose on my transmission. <laughs> so all it did was uh, spray a mist out down there. It really wasn't that big a deal. Okay, so when Clarky took the engine out, the first thing I saw was this converter. And I go, holy crap, that thing is hot. I immediately <clears throat> send the picture over to Marty Chance at Chance Converters. And he immediately calls me back and says, there is a problem. That is not supposed to be that way. We need to figure out what's going on with your car. Uh, Marty says that in order to turn that converter that color, it needs to hit 900 degrees. Oil temp, 900 degrees. Because it used to look exactly like this. trucker <laughs> all righty you saw it i don't know if nate got it on camera did you get it on camera the actual time uh no oh my gosh 
All right, well, the one maybe. Uh, yeah, it might be on GoPro. So, terribly slept on the tree again. God darn it. But anyways, it did go 110, so that's a tie for my personal best, but 285, which is my best, 424. That is a tenth faster than I've ever been in the eighth mile. That equals a 630 pass uh, in this car. 177 mile an hour. Nice, clean, uh, got a little loose up there. That's a big end. It's probably, probably my fault more than anything. Um, I should have pulled the, I, long story short, I, I needed to pull a chute under power and I, I just was screwed up because uh, it's not eighth mile racing. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, all said and done, I'm super happy with that. 424. All right, it is Saturday, uh, almost noon. And we're getting ready to go up and make the first pass for the day. Um, I've made a little bit of compensation yesterday. Last night I showed you it was the best pass ever. And um, we're going to, uh, all I'm going to do is, because the heat of the day, I just want to simulate that same pass. But I need to raise my RPM limit up uh, on the two steps so I can get the thing to quit surging. Because when it left, it left on the bottom of the surge instead of the top of the surge, so it only left on 12 pounds of boost uh, last night. So it's like, all right, sweet, man. If I get this thing to leave at 16 pounds of boost, I'm going to go faster. And uh, so that's that's the whole point. So I'm going to go out there uh, here in just a little bit as soon as they call us up and uh, make that pass. light was marginally better at least the O uh, but it only went 114 I thought it felt a little slow at first but it made a really nice straight clean pass and my parachutes came out everything uh, it must be getting a little more comfortable yeah it only went 295 it is a was a tenth off at the 330 from what it was last night and half of 114 uh, it was you know, 400 off in the 60 foot so, but it was still went 431, which previously would have been my best time in the heat of the day. And the uh, better part is it went 179.64. So that's the best eighth mile mile an hour I've ever had. terribly asleep on the light and I went I did go 111 60 foot but it only went 294 436 and was down you know eight mile an hour so it's funny being disappointed at a 436 <laughs> and I won but it's like oh my gosh I really thought it was gonna be faster there so but at least uh and it was the uh it, it should have been the exact same tune-up as what it ran this morning when it went 179 so i'm gonna see if maybe it uh 
Well, I don't know. I'm gonna see. We'll see. Yeah, that's good light. I know. Went old 40, which is actually, which is decent light. Pretty good light for me. I can be in the 20s. Uh, and it is actually, that's really fast for uh, for a 290, 330. So, I mean, it's still 112, 60 foot. 290, 427, 179. So, <laughs> the combination is, is my best so far. And I was probably, you know, I should have been 109. 280 something like 285 should have made it darn close to a team darn close probably darn close so probably darn close. darn close probably darn close <laughs> probably darn close <laughs> anyways winner 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 this is what a lone head gasket looks like on a dodge viper this is ben black's engine now we didn't build this engine originally. It blew a head gasket. Obviously right there. And uh, so I thought I would show you some stuff on how we're gonna be fixing this for Ben. So what I'm gonna do with this is we're gonna, obviously gonna have to fix the block. And I thought, you know what? We're going to dry deck this all at the same time. And we're gonna do that by welding up all these areas right here. Welding up, welding up this, welding up this, welding up this, this, then welding, 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 welding. I just started welding here, welding, welding, welding. And then we'll probably just uh, plug, uh, machine and plug these outside water jacket holes. So I'm gonna be just figure, finishing up welding this and I'll show you the whole thing when it's done. As you can see, I decided to uh, said, screw it. It's pretty quick, actually, probably quicker than drilling and tapping these holes here. So I just filled that all in. So you can pretty much see what I got going on there. Filled up that whole radius, filling in the holes, building my little bridge pieces, and uh, I'm gonna keep on going on. Uh, let's put some sleeves in here. We're gonna put the liquid, liquid nitrogen in the uh, little. Uh, styrofoam uh, cooler and then dip some sleeves pop these things in oh, yeah. boiling check it out it's really pretty it's really pretty fascinating thing so I'll kind of wait till it stops boiling, which would basically mean it has reached its temperature. Aha. Uh -huh. One. 
Well, I already got the other side done. Two. Billy M. Pink, my snap-on guy, comes in to me and says, I got something for the dog. And he goes, he's got these cool little uh, <laughs> snap-on brand dog chew toys. This is Dewey's tool kit. So he's got a hammer, a wrench, and fire. You know where the rest of your tools are at? Probably not. But anyways, <laughs> thanks, Billy. Those are pretty neat. Uh, they're going to be, and dog loves it quite apparently. It's time to go put that SML together. Let's go. <laughs> this is Jason Sack. Say hi. Hi, guys. Yeah. So this is his engine. The uh, Everything the hot side, cold side, it's all temporary just for the dyno so we can go through it, prove it out, make sure everything is okay. So he just did a, just the first initial hit. Uh, bigger, now he just got heat in it, made a quick short pull, no beast. Um, let's look at the data here real quick, and then we're just gonna go through, check valve flash, make sure everything looks all good right there. So, then, gonna have to do some tuning on there. So it's down on power from what it should be. I figure right there it should have been at least 15 pounds. Yeah, probably a little 1500. Made 14 pounds of boost. Almost 1400 horsepower. Actually, it's probably not that bad. But it's probably, uh, I think it's probably a couple hundred down. But we gotta look at the tune up there because anytime it does does this, and we've kind of sounded up there, so it's probably hitting some cells right now. All right, so the uh, just looking at the data log there, it actually it fell off in boost. The target dome was still the same. Where we go, target repair bill, and it just fell over. Well, anyways, it's right there, and and the boost just fell off at the end. So it was at uh, twenty four, and then right at the end of the pull, it was down at twenty two. It dawned on me, it's like, oh crap. I only have it programmed for 60, for having 60 pounds of dome pressure, as in that's what the boost controller thinks it has. And I actually only had it at 60 pounds of dome pressure available, like pressure available, like you had CO2. So it can't, uh, it defaults. And as soon as it sees that it hits 60 pounds of dome pressure, it will not go any farther. And it, it does something sometimes where it'll actually lower it. So I go, oh crap, I'll just go in there and raise it. So I raised that to 80 pounds of CO2 pressure to it basically, and then told it that it had 80 pounds of pressure, and then told it to, um, to the safety cut, ignition cut is at 45 PSI, which it 
99% sure it just hit the ignition cut. And that's what the pop was. But it goes, boom. It hit the ignition cut. Which blew the exhaust off, which blew half of my fill <laughs> fittings off of the wall. But we're at 3108. And I'm pretty sure it probably hit close to 45 pounds of boost. Then we get into, so back over to the Camaro, doing all the stuff that it does. So if you don't know, Clark's Camaro does a uh, half mile, standing mile, drag and drive events. Yeah, and street drive. Eighth mile, no 300 way. foot, yeah. 330, 60 foot. <laughs> Whatever it does. It does everything. It does, it, does, it does everything. Drives, you actually do drive it quite a bit. So there's, uh, when we get that back around, maybe we'll do a little more on that. But if you go back in any of the videos, there's a lot of videos on that car. You might just have to go back a lot because there's a yeah. lot of videos oh, that we've a done lot. on that car. Yeah. Alrighty, so you guys wanted to know what was going on with Pearl. This is Pearl. Pearl is back. Pearl is one of my daily drivers. If you remember, bought this car for 600 bucks out of Florida with a partially bad transmission, drove it from Florida back to Michigan. So you guys wanted to know differences in between the baddest big block based dry, drag and drive engine, 4,500 plus horsepower, proven the fastest drag and drive engine out there, period. Tom Bailey, 577, 260 mile an hour. Drag and drive after a thousand plus miles and went and got uh, food, at, went and got lunch after we went 577, 260 with the car. To the SML, the baddest LS based small block drag and drive engine soon to be proven out. I know what it'll do because I know what it'll do. So we're all set up on the hub dyno here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just do a two step check. I want to see how it spools, uh, anything differently. Um, that's what we're really kind of, that's one of the things that we're kind of checking out. Um, so we'll do a two step check. was a little lazy getting to the two-step about two and a half seconds but I think that's just because the air is really bad right now and it was richer but it jumped right up uh, and it was on the three-step three-step is this red line way up here and it turns off right here where the engine rpm goes down so from the moment it hit the limiter right in this area right here, basically three seconds, two and a half to three seconds, it was only on the rev limiter for a second and a half before it built full boost. And then it drops down. So then it drops down in engine RPM to what my, I want my launch RPM to be, and then it just maintains there. So I think we're going to uh, get the dining wall set up, and then we're going to make a couple pulls and uh, see... What kind of power, slippage, everything that the converter's doing.
All right, that's pretty good for a first hit. Uh, we'll see, should have made probably 40, 40 some odd pounds of boost right there. And stand and, and a standard correction, it is 34.91. No converter parts hanging out the bottom. That looks good. All righty, uh, pretty gall darn happy with that. That's actually the most I've ever made on this dyno. Um, I think that is that is definitely looking pretty good. All the mainline dynos all oper or, uh, operate in a standard correction, STD, not a SAE, FYI. See, see if there's any other little acronyms I can come up with there. <laughs> that is looking pretty good. It did. It made 42 pounds of boost. You found a look right there. 42 pounds of boost at... 87, 8900 RPM. So that was 9,000 RPM. 42 pounds of boost. That is right my normal spot that I run this thing at. limiter right there and kind of laid over so kind of laid over it was making more horsepower you see the old previous line there I know so this is the there yeah this is the previous mark so right here yeah it was uh, 200 horsepower higher right there and then uh, it only made the same amount of horsepower because it laid over right here. So, uh, yes, rev limiter, 9,000 RPM. So, you know what? Uh, it hit the rev limiter. It just hit the rev limiter earlier, and that's why the horsepower goes, whoa, because it was on the rev limiter. So, uh, well, I guess I just have to turn it up. All right. pretty happy with that and and actually I pulled I pulled out of it just a tick short probably actually should have just let it hit the rev limiter but um, I pulled out of it a little short and that's why it laid over just go tick up there I think it still would have carried out here at 9500 rpm probably would have made pretty close pretty close to that would have made 3900 horsepower and then so you guys probably think, oh man, just keep on turning up, make 4,000 horsepower. I could. Um, I don't know, I'll think about it. Cool. <laughs> You can hear this I know just is not gonna load it any harder and it ran up and hit the rev limiter so that's rev limiter at 9500 and that's why it lays over up there because she's still climbing uh, yeah is what it is um, that is 4200 horsepower at the wheel Oh no, that's pretty good. That's 55 pounds of boost. 55 pounds of boost. 4,200 horsepower. Bad.
mother trucker. I thought you might find this interesting because it's something different, all right? And uh, yeah, forgive me because it is hotter and more humid than all oh, holy. This is what hell would be like if it wasn't a dry heat. Anyways, this is your typical 28105 tire. This is off of Kyle's car. It's a cute little tire. It's basically, you know, it's a, a, a radial tire, 315 radial tires like this big. You know, just a little bit bigger. It's a cute little bugger. Then you kind of get into manly tire. This is the 36 inch Hoosier off of the wagon. Oh yeah, see the little tire is trying to roll his way in. There you go. Manly tire, manly wheel. Junior tire, junior wheel. But, look at this monster. Eep. Crazy. This is Todd Biles Muzz. Now, what what is really kind of interesting about this tire? You obviously see how big it is. This go he also he hill climbs this, hill climbs it, sand drags it with a paddle, uh, hill climbs it, and snow drags and snow hill climbs this. So this is the tire he uses. So imagine this climbing up. The side of a steep hill in snow wheeling carrying the front tires up the up the hill because it has da, 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 smx power we are now going to put it on the hub dyno it's kind of hard um to maneuver this thing around the shop's not as big as it used to be so we're trying to move this thing around with these giant wheels and tires on and it's kind of difficult, but we're getting it. No, I have one in this. Oh, that was easy. This went right in place. everything looks right everything's good it's making boosts making good power it's just driving through the converter so uh, that's not anything that we can uh, work on or do I got invited to go do the burnout competition and the Bristol 1000 with Cletus and cars so I had to build that car had to build the burnout car and I told you I wasn't obviously using this car obviously not gonna use Pearl I want to keep that all stock so let me show you what I did. This, this is what I, we're calling splinter. Brakes aren't hardly working at all. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so we gotta get the brakes working. That's why you test. That's why we test. Okay, so uh, the burnout's fine. The brakes are not. <laughs> so I mean, I'm on the brakes as hard as it would go, and so we're actually get, we're gonna need to fix that and figure out this whole brake issue because it wouldn't have done us any good to use my handbrake or anything because it was just going. I wasn't I wasn't gonna do anything else. <laughs> this place is awesome. <laughs> is this place not awesome? <laughs> just it's look at awesome. and just is you're down here in it and you <laughs> look at. All the racers up there, I mean, you know, Flicky Johnson. I mean, anyways, <laughs> that's all cool stuff. It's uh, pretty impressive. And this whole big tower, or uh, that's all uh, like a Jumbotron thing. That thing is massive.
I'm not gonna lie to you. It took off so freaking fast, and it was in, and it was going wrong. It was going wrong. It was. It totally threw me for a loop. I was totally out to lunch. I had this plan. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go in there. It's just gonna be so slow. And I'm gonna handbrake. I'm gonna start turning around. And the thing took off like a bad out heck. And I don't even know. After that, I don't know what happened. It was just. I was grabbing brake and hitting throttle and I was just, I couldn't see crap. I just see, I just gone. <laughs> so, uh, I suck <laughs> at this. But hey, is what it is. All right, so here's the deal, guys. This is the biggest race we've ever done. This is the most cars we've ever had on track. That being said, I do not care about the cars surviving. You know what I mean? I care about you guys surviving. All right, thank you guys. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are uh, getting ready to do qualifying, and so I don't even know what to say. They have just sent the pace car out. Getting things started here racing. My dad did qualify second to last, so I don't know if that's gonna be a factor or not based on how rough the racing is here, but we'll see. Well, I technically think I was tearing it up, was I not? I was intense. Yeah. He's tearing it up. He's tearing it up too good. He's tearing it up so good they crashed. I, well, I put it. I put it way under. I was on that guy, and he came down on me pretty hard. I don't know who it was, and uh, so it it spun me out just a little bit, and then somebody tagged me from behind. I think it sent me right up into the wall hard. So it's probably gonna hurt my my crotch strap here. Er, crotch strap area is a little tender. <laughs> so automatically I start thinking, oh okay. So who, who's the guy that goes, no, you hold that beaver up and let me smell his nuggets so I can see what they smell like. 
no, 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 it smells like this. No, 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 hold him up. I told you, hold the beaver up so I can smell his nugget. And they're, <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking this whole time of, you know, that who's who's who, who's holding the beaver up, smelling his nuggets, so they can make a candle that scented like beaver nuggets. That this, this is the stock frame rail, stock cross member that got added into to put a rack in it. And it's kind of all jacked up. Um, that frame rail is the non-straight version. Look at it from this angle. So you can see how bent in. This used to be straight, like that side. All right. So it pushed this whole thing in. Of course, it knocked my starter off. Brand new starter, too. So that $364 starter got knocked off. And uh, you can see, see what it did to the mid plate right here. That's pretty cool, a little bend going on in there. So what we're gonna be doing is, uh, Dave still's gotta come over, I talked to him yesterday, last night, he wants me to just fix it, and we're gonna make it better. And so this whole thing had really needed to be front clipped anyways, and these stock towers and all this stuff is just junk. It's not, it, this isn't really even very safe, to tell you the truth. So, kind of a typical deal. Uh, Tom decides that he, Tom Bailey, decides he wants to take 1.0. The original OG, this is a, the original Gangsta uh, Dragon Drive, the first car to go six seconds every day and have the six, first car to have six second average 10 years ago. Tom wants to bring it out. He tells me it's a couple weeks ago. I say, okay, whatever, cool. So you're going to bring the engine over and have me go through it? And he goes, no, I think we're going to check it all out myself. And I go, Okay, <laughs> and so he takes the pan off and he's checking bearings and, and uh, checking some other stuff. And you've watched his channel, we found a valve sticking issue. Um, but anyways, they get it all together because this is Friday, almost four o'clock, 4 p.m. Friday, we were supposed to leave right now, complete, ready to go down there to drag week. Instead, they pulled the, the caps off, looked at bearings. They put it all back together. I fixed the cylinder head valve guy, or valve uh, issue. Uh, that's on his uh, Tom Bailey Racing channel. You can go over and look at that. They put it all back together over there in their shop in Detroit, which is three hours away. And uh, they went testing last night. I didn't go. I didn't know they were testing. And so they uh, went testing last night, and after four burnouts, spun a bearing. So Tom should be here any moment. I'm going to dis completely disassemble the engine. I'm going to then take the crankshaft over to my crank grinder, who can't do it tonight. He can only do it tomorrow morning, which is Saturday morning. we got to be in Carolina in uh, Sunday morning. <clears throat> I'm going to have to stand there and wait for the crankshaft to get ground. Then I'm going to bring it back, put the engine all together. Then I'm going to put it in the back of my truck and drive three hours over to Tom's shop so we can put the engine in the car and then drive all the way through the night to try making it for Sunday morning to make the event. A delivery. Oh. <laughs> You've been driving too long, you didn't want to back it in? <sighs> they didn't clean out the filter because they just wanted you to see it. So it is... Bailey just left, of course, which is fine. I told him, I said, there ain't no sense you standing here waiting around for me to go through this whole thing. So he's going back to get the car all prepped up, all ready. So when I drop this thing off in the morning, well, it won't be the morning. It'll be late tomorrow night. Well, we'll figure it out. It'll be, uh, it'll be late tomorrow. Anyways, uh, he's going back to prep that all up. I'm going to get this all tore apart. It is 4.58, so 5 p.m. on Friday. We were supposed to leave probably about an hour ago. And uh, so obviously you're not. So I'll stay here and uh, get this the rest of the way to our part. grind the rods 20 because it was spun bad enough that bearing had killed it bad enough 
in that short amount of time to have to make this go 20 but at least it didn't break it didn't do anything else other than it also bent it 20 so Doug had to straighten the crankshaft out and then grind it and I knew that it was probably bent because after I had all the uh, the rods and pistons out of it the crankshaft was it turned over but it felt like you, know, you had to you had to physically turn it so enough talking I gotta get back to work Saturday afternoon, we're all assembled, put it on the stand, put it back in my truck, hauling butt because I'm an hour and a half later than I wanted to be. So, we are on the way. Like I said, 12 and a half hours from picking up a crankshaft at the crank grinder, driving it back to the shop, putting the engine together, driving it three hours over to here, installing it in the car putting it in the trailer and we got a 14 hour drive to make it to the drag week uh, registration by noon well we made it it is 6 30 6 30 a.m monday morning tom's over there cleaning i'll let you in the car it's only because he has his own uh, polish now i think because this is a real rarity but uh Anyways, we're just going to uh, wait till it gets daylight out and uh, hope I make a pass. Where is it at here? Sorry. 674-203 uh, right there. That was him lifting at uh, 6.0. So that's why the mile an hour is off. ET is not much different. Time for dinner. Tasty. Don't touch it. Tom. God darn it. That one's good. I'm gonna eat that one. All right, news flash. We have made it. We have driven this thing without rocker arms on the driver's side of the engine. And 37 miles, made it to the hotel. Stevie Jackson is meeting us here. He is going to bring us some valve spring tools and a valve guide tool. And we're going to let this thing cool down for a minute and start working on getting this thing tore apart. Uh, main goal in life is it would be awesome if I could have this fixed by midnight or 1 a.m. or so. Cool. Probably won't happen. Stay tuned. Alrighty, we are at 11 o'clock. Head is off. Valves are out. They were definitely stuck. Gonna hole in valve guides. Polish up the valve stems. The things are nice and free, loose, and start putting all this stuff right back together. Tom's over here cleaning up parts. You can see here that even though the valve's stuck, they never, never touch the pistons. Never touch pistons, anything there. So, looks great. Just physically had to beat the valves out of the guides. Uh, come back after we get it. Alrighty, 2.17 in the morning. Yeah. One second, let me just do this. Uh... Uh, just started it up, had an exhaust leak, tightening that up, putting it on the ground, and I put the front end on, taking care of tools, 
and uh, fill it up with water in the morning. Special thanks to Rick over here, who stayed up to help us. Right there, Hard on. Yep. And uh, oh, wake up here in a few hours and uh, go to the track. All right, Ned Dumpy, absolute insane. Lou, the manifold top off. Manifold top is mint. I mean, it does. It didn't even get scratched. It does have a dent right here, which was probably the hood. I mean, I think this is just where it landed in the grass. I think it blew off, probably went like 200 foot or so. You can see how many bolts this thing has all the way around it. They look like they're all broken. This thing with Ned Dumphy's intake manifold, in freaking sync. That is <laughs> amazing. I'm standing behind the car. Here's the pass here. Standing behind the car. This thing is takes off. It is really on a mission. And I said to myself, oh, that thing is hot and hot as in really fast. And all of a sudden, at about a thousand foot, this thing is oh, actually about eighth mile. Boom! And something flies up in the air. It is a couple hundred foot in the air. And I thought, oh, cow, it, you know, it's something with the intake, man, or not the intake, it's something with the carbon fiber, probably a piece of the hood, something blew off of it, and it's really light, and it, like, flies around up there. It was not. It was this. <laughs> This same style, that Ned's is blue, it was this intake manifold lid. It was absolutely crazy. So this thing, what had happened is that uh, we don't know, I don't think it was anything mechanical. I'll tell you why in a second. I think it probably picked up some kind of ignition glitch or something like that because it showed a manifold spike right there. At the ex You know, it data logged it right there. Just boom, spike. There was, I don't think there's anything mechanical because after it blew this manifold lid off a couple hundred foot in the air, they go out in the field, find it. It is just broken or pulled all the threads, all of these threads out of all of these bolts all the way around. Broken these bolts right here and didn't even bend the flange. Nothing bent. They literally, as even that has video on it, literally... Put it back on, put a couple bolts, uh, got some new bolts, put a couple bolts in it, longer, threaded it down with silicone, started it up, and drove it 187 miles. I don't think there's anything mechanically wrong with it. Now, if you know how this stuff works, they had taken the valve spring off, and they had air pressurizing the cylinder. Problem was, was all of a sudden, I don't know how, all the air left the cylinder this valve literally fell all the way down to hit the bottom of the piston it showed me what happened i look down in that hole and i see the valve down there and i go and just and so i'm just sitting there and i'm just thinking and i'm going i don't know um holy cow well our worst case scenario is we have to take the head off uh and fix it you got a spare valve if we ruin it. So I guess we'll try to like roll the engine over and hopefully the piston will just like push the valve up a little bit without bending it. I'm hoping that the piston will come up here, which is very hard because this is on a compound angle. The piston's going this way. The valve is coming down on its, or is on its own angle. And so it pushing it, it's going to be pushing it on an angle. Then the most amazing thing that I've ever seen was Ned goes, I think I can put this hose on the valve guide and I can suck that valve up <laughs> out of the cylinder bore. I'm not kidding you. And he did. He freaking did. It was party time. It was the most amazing thing. Somehow, some way, that, that valve dropped all the way down there, managed to Wiggle it around a little bit with a piston and suck it up with a hose. About the lifter problem, and he's going to try and squeak ahead of that guy in flat. That means he needs to run in the eight. Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Actually, even an I have replaced my two old machines with that one new machine. Now, so these are two old guys. Uh, I sold those. 
and customer that bought those is going to be here at 11. Well, it is quarter to nine. <laughs> they, were, they weren't supposed to be here with this machine until noon. So it's just here early, so it'll give us enough time to start unpacking this thing. But this is the support machine. So let's get this thing on ramp. Brand new VF4 Haas Super Speed Machine. Now this, this is a really nice machine. Obviously, big old boy, uh, especially compared to the other machines. Can't remember what the travels are. I think this has got uh, 24, 28 and Z and and uh, 20 something and Y and 55 and I think it has 50 or 55 and in, in uh, X. X is this travel. So, anyways, this the whole machine right here, like I said, this is a this is just part of the whole process. One further step. Pretty darn excited. Uh, this is just this is the support machine uh, for the next one, and so we just need to get something newer, up to date. My old machines, like I said before, were just um, I bought those to do little trinkety stuff, and those were like the starter machines and now we're stepping up to to this be the big support machine we obviously got all the rottler stuff the centroid stuff uh the cw balancer stuff um sometimes i think too much stuff <laughs> but uh continually working forward towards being more in-house so uh when i'm really late on stuff it's just going to be my problem and not waiting for everybody else and everybody else's issues and everybody else's problems and everybody's got to take their dog to the vet everybody's got to do that i mean whatever it is they all got to do uh it's so it's so there's always just a problem so i'm trying to get things that are more in-house make sure everything can happen and do a better job of being on time and uh meeting our timelines meeting our goals um but it's it, it's taken a while and it's taken a lot of investment uh to make it all happen and also by the way uh, I have to say this if you've hung on this long and watched this whole thing you'll probably appreciate this if you're not one of the people that hangs on and watches the whole video you probably don't appreciate this anyways and probably would get all upset but I am not the man by that I mean uh, I worked my way up from anything if you want to go see the origin video Nate make sure you put the origin video up here right over here uh, you see the origin video I started all this with 600 bucks. I don't have a rich family. I didn't have any money from my family. I don't have a rich investor. I don't have rich customers. Well, I have rich customers, but <laughs> they don't uh, uh, haven't ever borrowed any money from them. I've built this thing from the ground up. I am just like you guys that have done everything from the ground up. And you can make all this stuff happen yourself too. So we live in America. We can do that kind of stuff. So. Keep that in mind before everybody goes off the bandwagon of, oh, must be nice to have all the money to buy all these machines, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that just isn't the way it works. Worked for, worked for all this. And instead of putting money in my pocket, I put money in machines. And instead of putting, uh, well, I do have a race car, so I can't really say that. But <laughs> uh, I just need to make a couple passes just to, not full passes. I probably, I really only need to go 330 or eighth mile at most. And uh, just to prove out the converter. Yeah, it was up pretty high, not going, but it was perfectly straight. 
I put those two flats in, like Skinny Kid told me to. And uh, so it was nice, um, but it just it shook the tire violently out there. We're looking at data. You just saw, and take a look again right here at the car with how high the tire is. We're trying to figure out if we set the tire or set the 60 foot clock off with the with the bottom of the car. It wouldn't set it off of the front of the car. It's probably somewhere in the middle of the car. So I'm trying to figure out where it is actually at. Um, Cause boy, it was really good through the 60 foot. Best it's probably ever been. And I had it tuned down. And then what you can see here is that I put the, I tuned it down and I need to change it some more because this red line right here this is boost right here, flat boost right there. And then it went into surge. It goes into surge because I lowered my engine RPM down, the two-step RPM down. And I probably didn't lower the boost down enough. So it gets in a very unhappy spot in the map and it makes the turbo surge. The turbo is trying to move too much air than what the engine could take. And so it'll sit there and, and surge. And you can see the turbo RPM is actually going up and down 2000 RPM in hundreds of a second. Not happy. Absolute awesome video of the tire shake. So here's the video here again, right here at the backside. And you can see, look at the tire on the, the farthest away tire. You can see the tire go, whoa, 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 whoa. Get like super wide and narrow. Uh, long story short, boy, I'm, 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 Thinking that converter is pretty Billy Bad Boy. Uh, let's go change this tune up and go make another hit. Was, uh that was pretty on it it was it was a uh, only went 111 but it really I dropped it from I mean I dropped it significantly so we'll take a look at there so I definitely sneak that back up it went 289 at the 330 which is okay I mean consider I don't think I lifted before the 330 but uh it just had the height the tires hiked up so freaking high that uh i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to fix that so we're we're finally at a point where i've never had the car carry the tires that high that far before so we're gonna go back out there so what we're doing is uh all we're, i don't have the tools here to put any more rear steer in it i really don't want to mess around with that anyways we're going to put it is really killing the tire uh, if you look at the launch. So launch on both of them. You'll see right you know, over here, you'll see the just wadding the tire, just killing it. So we're just going to add tire pressure to it and go back out and make that exact same pass and see if that helps. Um, helps with the... Uh, well, we're going to see if it just goes to 1060 foot. That's all I really care. If it can go 1060 foot... And uh, the 330 definitely is going to be out there. So if it can hang in there straight, uh, we're going to start controlling the wheel height and how high the front end comes up by doing the, the uh, bull's horns and just probably going to turn right straight up, which I've never had to do before. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, But i got to cut my fender wells out and make everything fit. So we're going to go out there and make another hit here in a few did it and it was a handful it was all over the track which is fine uh, that's the fastest pass in the eighth yet and it was soft still because it but it went 109 109 still fine and uh, 
I mean, because we can get it faster, but we got to get the freaking front end down because it is up in the hair. <laughs> it is a, uh, it's a handful right now. So, uh, 109. <clears throat> All right, Marty Chance told me that I could release the top secret converter that we've been testing for him. So he got this thing out. All right, here you go. All titanium billet power pump converter. The first thing we're gonna be doing on this all billet titanium, this means titanium, titanium bolts, titanium, tit titanium, 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 titanium. It's amazing. Let's go weigh it and I'll show you the difference. Alrighty, let's weigh up the uh, stainless steel converter. This is my normal converter. Uh, then the all billet titanium converter. So this is, and this is full of oil. Or they both have oil in them, both directly out of the car, put cap on it. Uh, dog is not helping. This is, he is not reflective of actual, wait, yes. Back up, over here, come on. You're not helpful, back up. That converter with oil weighs 40 pounds. All right, let's take a look at the all titanium one. With oil, 29 pounds. So that is 11 pound difference in converter weight. So let's go back over to the car and explain why this all works and what is really going on, or at least part of what's going on. Horsepower is how fast you can accelerate something. Torque is how much load is applied to something. These things make more, literally make more horsepower because it can accelerate faster. Now, since we're all drag race guys, or most of us are drag race guys, or actually in any form of in, uh, racing, we're trying to always make whatever we're driving accelerate faster. Get from here to here. The engine to accelerate faster. If the engine accelerates faster, it makes the car move faster. Period. It's very simple. Okay? Now, I'm probably oversimplifying it to a point. Let me... Come here. It's all right. Come here. Put your foot right here. I don't know what you're doing, but you're freaking me out. Come here. Okay. Put your foot right here. Eh, eh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you do not want to touch it, do you? All right, right here. Look, you can touch it right there. Well, over here, here. He's a good dog, he doesn't want to mess up my guy. Even though he stuck his foot in at one time already. Alright. <laughs> Got it. So I think he can do it. It's a good way to get hurt. Yeah, it is. Ah! You're right. I got my pants. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. Oh, he's gonna, gonna help, help you. By biting help, you. Help me, do we? This will be 13, it's 13, seven that we'll have. Oh, you gave me a whole inch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a guy. Hey, I'm looking out for you. <laughs> Look out for the machine. If it comes down to making your life easy, that's what I hunt for. Right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so all we, we got this beam all unbolted. We're going to roll the door all the way up. Yep. And then just pop this thing out, cut this one off right yep. here. And then just pull the thing back while you're right. driving in. All right, all right. <laughs> hey, if it's easy. Everybody, everybody do it. Can. That's right. So once they come in to move that machine, we'll uh, rip it open. Start ripping. Hear that? Start ripping. That's a forklift. Okay, what's it? What's it on right now? Nothing. All right. All right. Let's manhandle this thing. Right here. 
That forklift doesn't look like it's heavy enough to pick that up. It doesn't. The hydraulics are fine, but it doesn't look like the, the, the weight. weight is back. I know. But I mean, it's just because it's not all solid, and it's probably, it's, just, it's obviously bigger than what we're saying. Yeah. That's what you need is right there is the pry bar. Get the pry bar out. Fixes everything. Yeah, that fixes everything. I don't think that's going to pick that up. They had to use that to pick it up, didn't they? Didn't they did, but they came in from the other side. Oh. Well, that uh -oh. freaking block ain't loose there. Oh, Erickson. You, <laughs> you can try, but it ain't gonna do it. It can happen. Down. No. No, down. I mean, that thing's like right out on the edge of the fork. That is so sketchy. So sketchy. I think it would really help if you went out there and got on the back of it. You think so? To held it down, yeah. All right. It no looks problem. like it, it looks like it needs 150 pounds of ballast. This is about 150. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. They're just gonna come in from the side. Yeah. I told them they come in from the side. That's why we made the door so much wider. Oh, the see they're coming in at from the back. That's what I was wondering. The heavy side. The back side here. Yeah, because I was I think that well the weight's in the back on that end. All right. It's going to fit. It's going to fit. Give me up a lot more. Yeah, I'm good. Put the top back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stay away from the wagon. <laughs> oh, the I'll sacrifice that for this. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't mess up the car. <laughs> Is that about right? I'll front to look to the left. Crinkles. As long as it's square to the work or twerk to the wall. That's pretty square. Is it pretty square? My eyes are Oh my yeah. That's why that's that's exactly what you want to hear I machine is my eyes aren't very good. I can't tell. <laughs> so you're seeing the the moving in. As soon as my scissor lift uh, recharges, we'll gonna put the door back together. It's been open for an hour and it's colder and crap outside. <clears throat> so anyways, you can see they got uh, everything set. It is a big machine. Now, take a look at this machine. This is your typical VF4 right here. I don't know if you're getting the whole machine in here, can you? All right, then you can look here. The big wheel right here is the this is the that's the tool carousel in there so that that, that must be well, that's six foot diameter it's a six foot diameter tool changer wheel in there <laughs> crazy so this is what we had to have the big slab for and so we'll be clamping this thing down and getting everything all taken care of and they're basically all done now so everything's in then the other thumbnail <laughs> I'd hold, I'd hold two, well, I could hold two of these up, but. <laughs> you throw your back out now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, diesel, big diesel stuff really is fascinating. Okay. This is really cool because notice, this is not broke. I don't even know how all this kind of stuff works and functions because the skirt is separate from the piston and ring lance. So the skirt is aluminum. This whole top uh, ring land area and and uh, uh, cup for the direct injection is steel. Yeah. And then it must be artic. Oh, it's articulated. See this? So this is really interesting. I have to. Uh, I'm just thinking about it now. So I'm just <laughs> trying to figure out how stuff all works. So us gasoline guys have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, we have We're just yeah, I just question marks. Yeah, I'm honestly around. just thinking I have this makes just obscene amounts of torque mm -hmm. power. Um 
like I said, this would never this would never even go to two thousand RPM. Yeah, it would do it, but it's not happy up it's, there. Yeah, it it's don't okay. make any power. Yeah, up there. Uh, unhappy. Yeah, unhappy up yeah. there. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Morris and Steve Morris Engines. Like I have been. And, uh, Hello. Hello. Dang, dude, look at this thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Friggin' Michael Jordan of trailers up in here. It is. Holy cow, this is a. Look how tall ceiling this is. This is crazy. Our boy Tom Hammonds could Tom Hammonds walk could around fit in here. Yeah. Ducking around. Got a little bathroom in, in the back. Master bed. Two bunks. It'd be like Ooh, which one? Kyle, Lighting. Nate. Oh yeah, Un under under uh, stuff light. This must be a bathroom. Very sexy. This is the crew bathroom. John. The John. <laughs> crew John. I know. This would be Nate's bed. This is your camera guy's bed. He there can't sleep go. up there. He has a he's a danger to roll off. He's a danger to roll off. All right. Put a, a, put a we can put a, a rail on there. Yeah, put a gate on there. That'd be a right. safety gate. For you. We can't use those, but. Oh, I just they, have to jump. No, these are for, these are beer holders. Oh, See? one, two, three. Or wine, wine. That's part of the custom, <laughs> right? I like how you do that, but I'm telling you right now, you need to put something in there to hold them from falling off. So I'm just giving you a heads up. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Does it, it looks like uh, this whole section right here comes with crew members provided. These guys, yeah. these, these guys yeah, all come as crew. The... You can take them. I've been trying to kick them out for about 20 minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't leave. So. Oh, all right. I got gotcha. you. If you want to take them, you can. They're poor college students. But... Poor college students. All right. Crew. Yep. Oh, sweet. As long as we don't have to pay you. <laughs> and then we got the... That's nice. I like this. Thank you. All right. Cool. Thanks for your time. What's your name? My name's Jane. Nice to meet you. I'm nice Steve Morris. <laughs> That's Kyle Morris. And Nate. <laughs> Not Nate Morris. Alright, time to go do other stuff. Look at the paint on we this do, thing. We should do something. Some kind of awkward pose or something on Alan's car and then send it to him. We were just talking about that yesterday. That's a common theme. So I, no, I nobody in Raising has any drip. Why I'm putting that out there right now. Everybody dressed the same. We're changing that. We're changing the status quo. <laughs> Good. Well, I want you to notice that after we talked about having a very defined method of where we we're going to go, we are now doing what I call the zigzag method. <laughs> but I'm not even leading the zigzag method. They're just doing it. Yeah. That's okay when they're doing it. Even though we've done all that welding, this, you put your hand right right here. It's still, maybe a little warm up there, but no, no, yeah, you know, not this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. So the whole thing is to keep the heat out of the port. That keeps the heat treat there, keeps the block the block size. You're not changing anything. It's about well, how quickly you melt it and get off it. About BTUs. I'm Steve Morris. 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 Steve Morris engines. Have a great day.